Andy and I have both listened to the show separately. We have not discussed it with each other beforehand. Let's get into it. This is a show hosted by two people, Patrick Hines and Jillian Pensavilla. And these people are very excited with themselves. Yeah. I think it's one person and one hyena. Yeah. This fucking guy is out of control. All right. Let's get right into it because (laughs) I want to play a clip that kind of sums up the show for me. Mm. This guy laughs at everything. Like even Stavros from Come Town's like, all right, that's too much laughing. Exactly what I thought. Relax a little bit. Tell me what's even the joke here. He's cracking up in the background. Explain to me what's funny about this clip. Ted Bundy is on death row. Right. It's 1980. <laughs> like, it's over, sweetheart. It's done. You're going to that goddamn electric chair. It's just happening. So sorry. But, like, this is just the f- right. <laughs> He's just losing his mind. Oh, yeah. She's just saying things that are factual. There's example after example of her saying something that is not a joke and him losing his shit. <laughs> So I thought we would try something, Andy, because it's actually really impressive that Jillian's able to podcast while he's just laughing at nothing the whole time. I wonder if you and I can do this show with right. Patrick just laughing yeah, randomly in the background. It's not all distracting the time. at all. No, it's normal. This is how you know that a show's funny and fun. Right. When a gay man is cackling like a lunatic yeah. throughout the entire thing for no reason. Right. This is the number one podcast now because it's a laugh riot for no reason. By the way, True Crime Obsessed is a huge show. Right. With a huge following. Yeah. Inexplicably. There's no reason for this to there be. There is a specific reason, which I'll get into. Ah, okay. Nothing new. It's not going to be any new territory. All right, Andy, do you have a, a clip that you think sums up the show for you, my friend? Well, oh, sh- by the way, I should mention, I'm sorry, I answered your question and I cut you off. Something that I always make fun of podcasters for doing. I should mention, I listened to the Ted Bundy episode because it was about, what these guys do is they watch a documentary or a true crime documentary and then they explain every single part of it while playing clips to also explain every single part of it. Yeah. Basically adding no value. Right. To the documentary at all. Hmm. Now, I watched the Ted Bundy tapes documentary series. So I was like familiar with it. I'm like, cool. Since I already know the subject matter, I'll see what their take is on it. Yeah. And it, I and learned nothing new. Right. They added nothing to they, it. They added nothing. In fact, when they would start playing, I'm, I'm probably ruining all your bets. No. When they start playing the clips from the actual documentary, you're like, oh, I should just go watch that. That actually sounds really good. It's well produced. It's interesting. Correct. Yeah. Who, I mean, who wants to listen to people scream talk over clips, right? Nobody does that, right? Get, get anyway, a little, get a little cute with me now. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, my clip eight is my sum up. This is where he's learning. It's all about raising money. And the political strategist is back to say, like, we felt like for Rod to be known as more than Dick Mel's son-in-law, you got to have a million dollars. We said, Rod, you get that. People start taking you seriously. He would go anywhere to raise money. And there were no limits back then. So he was raising 25000 50000 100000 at a time. He raises $3 million. He gets elected governor. He does all this great shit. So it's, I, I made a mistake, yeah. and I listened to maybe the most boring episode you could possibly select. It's the one that— How would you know one's more boring than another? Well— How would you judge that? I, but after listening to it, I— it, so. A politician was corrupt. Wow. <laughs> you know, like... Uh, we were listening to... Producer Chris was over last night. We were listening to Mick Millions. Okay. Which is another thing I'm familiar with. Yeah. But that is just like they, you know, the Monopoly game at McDonald's, the Mafia was... Right. Yeah. When, That's you know, another one that I got bored watching. I was just like, yeah. I don't give a shit I mean, about it was, it's an interesting... It was a little too long. It's yeah. an interesting series, but to listen to them talk about it, we just turned it off. We usually have a lot of fun listening to these podcasts yeah. right before, and we're just like, ah, this is boring. Right. And the one I listened to was the Rod Blagojevich... Yeah. Chicago mayor, governor, whatever, turning corrupt. And it's just, I, I don't care about this. And I don't care about you screeching and hee-hawing over it while you play clips of a better produced documentary. It's not really documentary. In the, in the I'm going to say it right. Yeah, thank you. Someone's <laughs> got to do it. It's not really in the vein of true crime when you're talking about the McDonald's Monopoly scandal or Rod Bovojevich, however you say that. Yeah, <laughs> none, none of it is really shit that you're interested in. You want like death and murder and rape and pillaging and correct. <laughs> a couple other p words. I mean, at least that's <laughs> uh, fascinating because you can't relate. But a, a politician that took money that they weren't owed—that's not interesting at all. You can't relate to murder and rape. Are you gaslighting me, Andy? <laughs> is this how you try to cover up? Yeah, yeah. I'm, all right, I'm throwing people off of my trail. I also want to point out. How fake these people are. Because I think it's important to note that 
they're not being their genuine selves at all in any single way. You can tell from the ad reads. So the guy Patrick's doing an ad read. Listen to the reactions that he's getting from his co-host Jillian. We got this amazing brandless popcorn, which is like cheddar <gasps> cheese and like salty buttery. Speaking my language. <laughs> we got these amazing gluten-free pita chips. <gasps> but, but then we got like a little flipping spatula that we use to like flip burgers. What? It's some garbage website that sells fucking everything. Yeah. And he's explaining that he bought like random nonsense. And I got to zoom in on when he talks about pita chips. Yeah. Listen to her reaction <laughs> yeah, to pita chips. Pita chips. <gasps> Shocking. You would think this woman weighed 500 pounds the way she reacts yeah. to food. She doesn't. But that was my, I just assumed, I'm like, oh, this is a very large, obese woman is that, who can't wait to eat pita chips. Is that Chairbreaker's sister? Yeah, right. That's what I was thinking. But no, it was not. Yeah. It's just someone who's overreacting to ad copy and trying to pump it up a little bit when it's really not that exciting. No. You bought popcorn on the internet? What? <laughs> it's amazing. Super just everything has has to be pumped up to make you believe that you're listening to something interesting. They're shot out of the cannon from the very beginning. Yeah. And it sounds like it's sped up too. I usually listen to podcasts that I'm reviewing on the show a little bit sped up. So I don't waste all of my fucking life doing this. <laughs> you know, I want to have some of my life not listening to shitty podcasts. And uh, I couldn't, I couldn't if, with this if, one. It's if, too if fast. You, if you listen to this on two X, you, yeah. you there's your no way brain would explode. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and he's proof. Also that, they're definitely doing a lot of hard work with editing. Oh, I want yes. You, if you would play my clip two, yes. called "Rain in the Hysteria." Listen, to, it, this isn't an interesting clip so much, but you got to listen to right at the end when listen to Patrick mm -hmm. starts losing his shit. They they have to like cut it off because right. it's just like, how long how long do we have to let this go on before <laughs> we get to the rest of the show? Well, this whole thing opens with Rod Blagojevich. Oh, God. That's the, and that's the only time you're going to hear it. That <laughs> precise. So it opens with him. Yeah. And how hard cut on. There's a lot of examples of that where you could tell it was cut because he's laughing too hard and then he just starts talking straight. Yeah. So you know that they cleaned it up. In fact, the other reason why you know that they do a ton of editing is because they play outtakes at the end. Oh, my Did God. Did you hear this? You know what? I... Didn't tapped get to out the end. at yeah, like 10 minutes from the end smart. so i never even got all right well that. here are some hilarious outtakes you know how like they put the outtakes of a movie or something mm -hmm. and a comedy and at the end and maybe it's cute or it's a little bit funny this has none of that charm and then <laughs> i'm so glad i was pre-warned to not call him handsome because the look on your face you're not here for that i'm shit. not I i'm know. not i know he also says, when I met Marlon, I was attracted to him because his wife could cook good sushi. <laughs> we also find out that during this campaign, Ted got laid for the first time. Yeah, and Walla Walla. Okay. <laughs> Ooh, that's a real place. Why did that make the cut? He was laughing hard at it, just like everything else. What's the difference? What doesn't he laugh hard at? They promote their Patreon a lot. Oh, God, yeah. Which they have 37,000. And there's a million ads. There's a lot of ads. They're here. raking it in. Yeah. People actually, I was reading a lot of reviews mm -hmm. on this show because it's highly rated mm -hmm. and a lot of reviews on there. One of the things people bitch about, they're like, you have 37,000 patrons. You guys really need to read 17 ads every <laughs> yeah. show. Yeah, fuck you. It seems like a lot. So he's promoting the Patreon and all the reasons why you'd want to sign up for that. You guys, you get complete episode by episode coverage of The Jinx, The Staircase. Serial. Serial, Making a Murderer. All of our mini episodes are extended outtakes. It's all commercial free. Yeah. Extended outtakes. Jesus. Oh, Hello. remember that thing that we decided wasn't good enough for the show so we cut it out? If you pay us, we'll let you hear it. Why? Uh, if they cut out everything that wasn't worth putting in, there would be no show. Right. Jesus Christ. They, they probably have like a random editor that just goes in and slices things here and there because I couldn't tell the difference between what made the cut and what didn't make the cut. No. As I'm listening to these outtakes. It's not like they're they're yelling F slurs or something fun. Like that right. would be a fun outtake. Yeah. They, at one point they do an ad for uh, clip seven is honey. And I realized that honey is just throwing money at all the worst people. Oh. Because. Do they not I, have my email address? Yeah. They probably, <laughs> you probably should get in on this. Because another, I've been keeping tabs on a previous person because I want to see how their podcast is going. Uh -huh. And I realized that they do an ad for honey too. So I cut them in at the end of this let's see oh, if you okay. can figure out who's okay. also getting honey money sounds good oh girl 
Honey is back. All right, look, can we start off by telling the people what Honey is, and then I'm going to tell you a story. Okay, so here's the thing. Everyone shops online. Don't act like you don't. We all do it. I know that you are all about to jizz in your pants, and your panties are wet. But first, Jesus Christ. before we get started on oh, this no. week's episode, you know the motherfucking drill. Honey, baby. Oh, oh. Honey, you guys, the reason this show is able to happen is because of our sponsors. We were talking honey. about Call Her Daddy. Fucking thanks a lot, honey, for keeping that asshole on, on the air. Oh, she's doing really well, too. We were talking about Call Her Daddy when I was on Drew and Mike. And one of the things I, I might even have pointed out on this show, too. One of the things I learned about them with all the articles that came out with uh, the falling out they had, yeah. Dave Portnoy coming out and everything. Their audience is mostly women. The people who listen to that show are actually girls. And it's like young girls. She's talking about jizzing in her panties right. to 14 year old girls. <laughs> and it's gross. Yeah, it is. Gross. It's, I. I not a fan. That one was, they had Miley Cyrus on, which is just. They had Miley know. Cyrus on? Yeah. She was her, she went to Miley Cyrus's oh, house God. and interviewed Miley How Cyrus. How fucking annoying does that sound? Album. Miley Cyrus's one voice where I was just like, I, I was just like, I can't listen to this. Because yeah. like I said, I was trying to find like a reason to talk about her more because I'm hoping that she's, you know, you know hitting the skids because of the controversy yeah, and all yeah. that. No, it's, but still, it's still going apparently strong. Apparently she's doing just fine and getting bigger guests than ever. That's, but it was like a super boring. That's interview. interesting. Ad copy. Guys, after you get done jizzing in your pants, get the lawnmower 3.0. <laughs> <laughs> Promo code WATP20. Yeah, yeah. For free jizz and shipping. Jizz. Don't, don't jizz on your razor, guys. I'm joking. It's a joke. Oh, I don't want to get the fucking email. I just had my razor and now it doesn't work. I electrocuted myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck me. Let's talk more about ads because that seems to be what we're doing right now. Uh, this is an ad read that's just awkward. And I'm sure he's ad living and you can hear that it was edited and it doesn't make any sense to me. You guys, Robinhood, bottom line, it is like the simplest, easiest investing app. Even a gorgeous, thin, beautiful, amazing haired person like me can figure out how to invest. Okay. So the Why joke. Are they letting the guy that has the worst speaking voice do all the ad reads. So the joke is, even a gorgeous, thin, beautiful, amazing haired person like me, amazing haired. Amazing per, I mean, haired. he's obviously ad libbing, but they're editing so much shit. Why not edit your ads better? Why not make your Why not have your ads make sense? Yeah. So maybe you sell some products. And by the way, this Robinhood app is really it's a way to trick people who are idiots right. out of their money. Yeah. Which is the opposite of what Robin had did. <laughs> and uh, this nub nuts talks about using this app. It's an investment app, if you didn't know. The Robinhood app is super simple to use. It's super intuitive. Yeah. It really, truly is easy and fun. And I'm one of those people now. I, I own two stocks, and I check them every, like, 15 minutes. Oh, my God, congratulations. It's just another. <laughs> the, the children. I wonder what his stocks are in. Astroglide. <laughs> <laughs> They, they had penicillin. He owns two <laughs> stocks, Andy. And he's so excited to use the Robinhood app to check his stocks. And of course, they have to use the word that just grates on me. But that's the point. It's a great way into this world where you guys, we should be adulting a little bit totally. more. <laughs> Yuck. Fuck you. Guys, why don't we start adulting by using an app for children to trade penny stocks? They hit a lot of like sore spots with me and <laughs> yeah. shit they tell. We'll, we'll get to it but i don't know if he did this on your episode but on my episode patrick hines is right out of the gate singing good fun oh I yeah i can't wait to hear this oh it's a lot of fun it's not just for gays anymore yeah. he's really feeling it hmm. and it reminded me of another character who's way over the top because this person is not really who they're pretending to be no one's that gay. Oh, sure. He's, he's acting yeah. like he has seven dicks in his ass at all times. Yeah. He's not that gay. There's no way. Right. But that did remind me of another character. The whole world's gone to hell, but how are you? I'm super. Thanks for asking. All things considered, I couldn't be better. I'm a thing. I'm feeling super. No, nothing bugs me. Everything is super when you're... Don't you think I look cute in this hat? <laughs> it's like... He's like an unfunny big you, gay nobody, now. Nobody can keep that kind of energy up all the time. You wouldn't at, want to. Look at Robin Williams. Look at how he ended up. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. Just got dark. <laughs> Andy. Uh, but 
he does laugh at uh, a joke really, really hard when, what's her name, Jillian? Yeah. Says that somebody is a dumb bitch. This is a hilarious joke. What a great punchline. To Patrick, yeah. But he fucking falls for it. I know. This dumb bitch. <laughs> he falls for it. He looked at me. If he thinks that's that funny, the next time I talk about Chrissy Mayer, I want to have this guy co-host. Sure, yeah. Because the fucking names that I call her, way funnier than dumb bitch. Hilarious. I mean, since we're on the subject of Jillian's great jokes, let's hear my clip for... The episode really opens with Blagojevich's wife, Patty. Oh, God. And, and is she a Patty? <laughs> She's really a Karen, right? She wants no, to see the manager no. right oh. now. I, oh, yeah. I, that might come out later. Right. I mean, I, I, I won't put anything past anybody at this point. As my late grandfather said, I know trust in nobody. So who the hell knows? Are these punchlines? Are they pretending Ooh, to have personalities? Calling somebody a Karen? Yeah, wow. No. That's not... 30 minutes ago, <laughs> two minutes ago. It's so fucking Still talking about now. Karen's. Jesus Christ. And we'll get, there's going to be later, our next, the other segment I brought, another hack talking about Karen's. We'll get to that. All right. Well, stop, hope... stop calling people Karen's. I, there is at least one Karen who listens to our show yeah. regularly. Okay. And I do feel bad for her that that's become a derogatory term. Okay. But I have to say, when I was reading the reviews, all of their listeners are Karens. <laughs> I mean, seriously, like that's who their target audience is. They're calling out Karens. These are women with no friends. <laughs> yeah. The people who listen to this. It's all women, of course. It's true crime. And none of them have friends. I, did, I, I know that my sister is a big a true crime person. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I... Texted, I was just like, Do you know anything about this show? She's like, Oh my God, I, it's my favorite show. I'm a patron and I went to see him live in New York City. I was like, Fuck you. You can't even give WATP five. You're, you're on this podcast, Patreon, but not your, the show that your own brother is on. You she, can't. She's dead to me. Yeah. <laughs> you think you're pissed. Yeah. She's listening right now. I'm she's, sure. She's fuck dead you. To me. <laughs> Why isn't she calling in then? She's a fan of the show. I have a thousand questions for her. <laughs> Most of them are the word why. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? <laughs> what happened when you were growing up? What did Andy do to you yeah, yeah. to make you think this is entertaining? Andy dropped you on your head one too many times. Is this because your brother's ya. Joe? Is Love this ya. why you do this? <laughs> well, let's see, Carl. What else do we got? I mean, did we both do laughing supercuts? Yeah, I think it's so. when you when you're looking at the waveform when you're doing your editing. It's very easy to find the laugh part. Yeah, yeah. It was the easiest supercut I ever did. I didn't make it super long because I knew we were both do this, but my clip three is the laughing. <laughs> and this is all before the opening credits. I know. <laughs> I just left a little non-joke in there so you can see what he's laughing at. It's like... Speaking of supercuts, there's another thing that they overuse uh, that's super fucking annoying, and that would be the word girl. Yeah. Girl. 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 Yes, girl. Ooh. I was like, girl. 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 <laughs> girl. <gasps> um, girl. Well. Girl. 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 <laughs> girl. 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 Yes. Girl. Good job, girl. Yeah. Even my super fan sister, I, I said, what What are their like crutches that they lean on? And she's, she said, it's girl all day. They both call each other girl. I listened to a, an episode about Ted Bundy, and I pulled out all the times they were actually referring to girls. I wanted this to be a pure super cut because there's lots of girls in that story. Sure. That was just them talking to each other. Yeah. <laughs> and it was more than half of them yeah. using the word it girl. Was, it wasn't the topic relevant girls. It was just them calling each other girl. Correct. Wow. Hmm. Um, they get political. I don't know if they got political in your... Oh, well, it's a political... What do you yeah, mean? Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, they obviously have an agenda, and uh, right out of the gate, this happens. Girl! What are we talking about today? Just arguably one of the worst people I've ever heard about. Yeah. Ted Bundy. Yeah. <laughs> are you saying that because he's a Republican? Well... <laughs> Just kidding, Republicans. We love. I love that we have like Republicans and some conservatives who listen to our yeah, podcast. They're not all like Ted Bundy, everybody. <laughs> Hilarious. Uh, then there's some Nixon bashing because in the year 2020, we're all still bashing on Richard Nixon. <laughs> if I have to watch one more goddamn image of Nixon with those two fingers, I know. I, I can't stand I can't. it. Yes, you are, sweetheart. You are a crook. Um, oh. 
<laughs> She's what? calling out Richard yeah. Nixon. Yeah. <laughs> take that, hot Richard take, Nixon. Hot take. And who's forcing <laughs> you to watch images of Nixon? I know. What are you, what are you looking at? What are you talking You're about? You're looking it up. Too soon. Fucking oh. idiot. All right. So the reason why Ted Bundy was able to get away with shit is because of his white privilege. I don't know if you knew that. Let's find know, out more. White people get away with everything. Let's find out more. <laughs> We're just immediately with the privilege. Like Ted Bundy like can make a phone call to some literary agent right. and make this deal. And then it's like, okay, sir. Right. What? I know. So the reason why the Bundy tapes exists is a pretty fascinating guy. I don't know if it's because he's white. Most serial killers are. Yeah. But he's also charismatic. He took his crime spree on the road to multiple states. It's a very interesting story. He escaped from jail a couple of times. Sure. And he's like, hey, I want to contact a journalist. Said, hey, I want to give you my memoirs. And they're like, yeah, we'll do that. They're like, fucking white guys get everything they want. <laughs> this guy was, was killed in the electric chair. Fucking white privilege. Yeah. Here's, here's another example of them talking about his white privilege. This is why he got away he got with to, him. He got to get killed in the electric chair before everybody else, Carl. He got yeah. to jump <laughs> out of the line because of his white privilege. <laughs> right. And, it's so insane. Like, these people are so bad at this. How did he get away with it over and over and over again? Yeah. You know why? And I've seen this all over Twitter and Facebook. Because he was a white guy. Yeah, because no one, every, all the, everyone in authority was like, there's no way that dude who looks like me could do this. There's no 100%. way. 100%. No it's not because it's not women were stupid and believed him and got tricked into his car. Their theory is, because he's a white guy, he was able to be a serial rapist for years. Because... Black guys have never done that, Bill Cosby. <laughs> There's never been a black guy who's been a serial rapist that got away with it for a very long time because they were charming and everyone liked them. Yeah, and rich. Yeah, and rich. And they just like their personality. And by the way, he goes, oh, it's just because white people see him and they see themselves. White people hate other white people. Tom Myers. <laughs> Opie. <laughs> Stuttering John. <laughs> the list goes on. What do all these people have in common, Andy? White people. White men. Terrible people. And by the way, in this episode, they explain why he was able to get away with this shit for so long. The guy studied the way the police handled crime. It gave him access to a lot of crime statistics. And he saw what the police did and what the police did not do. And he saw all sorts of places where somebody who was smart enough could take advantage of the chaos and the lack of consistency from one jurisdiction to another. So they explain... That this documentary explains the ways that would get away with it is because he kept moving and they didn't transfer the records over to the next state. So they didn't know, they didn't have a description on them, they didn't know what was going on. And this is information that they should know about. And they go, he got away with it because he's white. Yeah. <laughs> you're adding nothing. You're actually, you're taking away information that's already there. Yeah. It's not because women are trusting or cops are bad at their job. Right. It's because he's a white man, <laughs> a straight man. So, all right, I, I do want to take a second here, Andy, because I, I copied over some uh, some reviews that I was reading. Oh, can, can we, before we move on to that? Yeah, yeah, of course. My, my clip, uh, let's see, clip 12 is kind of related to this. Oh, yeah, Bl- yeah, yeah. Uh, instead of waiting for his court appeal in, pr- in prison like a normal person, they put him on The Apprentice because of his white privilege. <laughs> okay, your, uh, not clip, because of his celebrity. Right, clip 12. We all know, based on OJ, based on R. Kelly, yeah. the whole idea is we're getting ready for the trial. They're going to make him famous and because they know it's harder to get a celebrity convicted. And I'm thinking, obviously, OJ is the worst person in America, but he was a fucking celebrity, right? Yeah. Same with R. Kelly. Same with all these actual famous people who get acquitted. Rod Blagojevich is not famous, and putting him on The Celebrity Apprentice, where he's making jokes with fucking Sinbad, is not going to make him famous. It just makes him the butt of the joke. Yeah, and usually if you're someone, if you're like a black kid when you're awaiting trial you're in prison they throw you in Rikers right. but he's awaiting totally. trial and he's yeah. on television with Trump so great thank you right. thank you everyone for everything white privilege white privilege you get to be on TV with, you get to be on TV with, with Sinbad. Sinbad and Trump an unfunny famous comedian it must be white privilege right and they're comparing him to OJ <laughs> and R. Kelly. Two people who aren't white, by the way. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter if it fits into the argument they're making. The argument's obviously true. It's fine. Aye, aye, aye. All right, so let me read you uh, some of these reviews that I was looking at because I'm, I'm noticing a pattern. Um, this one says, Tired. Have been a faithful listener for years and a Patreon member. I'm tired of the political opinions, etc. We have to deal with this every day. This podcast was an escape from everyday life, but y'all developed an agenda. Have at it. Uh, here's another one. 
Such a drastic change. I used to love this podcast. I was a Patreon member and looked forward to Tuesdays and Thursdays and escape from reality to laugh with Jillian and Patrick. Well, then you're a fucking moron. <laughs> but all right. These days, this podcast has become way too politically charged. Jillian has crossed the line between sassy and just straight miserable. The agenda of pushing the social justice warrior narrative seems to be all she is focused on. She's become unbearable to even listen to. So it was interesting that I was picking up on this shit. And then as I'm reading these reviews, even the Karens who are listening to us at home are going, I, you know, are we going to keep bashing white people forever? What's yeah. going on here? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that I want to keep doing this. Uh, here's another review. Uh, this one is a one star. Uh, you know, for two people that hate other people's opinions and beliefs, they sure have a lot of opinions and beliefs. Stick to the story. Even though this is a podcast that basically steals other people's work, they recap a documentary. How hard is that? Plus, I truly could not care any less about your personal thoughts and opinions. People with platforms like this always seem to think that their opinions matter so much and they'll have an impact on their followers' opinions. Trust me. No one is going to change their minds because of some podcaster. <laughs> uh, Let's I was, go watch the documentary, I then. was enjoying oh, this. Did I say it right? Documentary? I don't know. <laughs> we got called out for saying it wrong. But it's like, you don't have to listen to this podcast. You could just, all the shit that they're talking about. I know. You can just go find it and watch they're it. They're literally just stealing content. Yeah. If you don't want to hear about their opinions and their views, why are you listening to this? I don't understand it. Yeah. Uh, but let me explain why some people it. who do listen to it, listen to it. And this is probably an example of a review that sums it up. The best friends you've never met. Started listening a couple of days ago. Subscribe to the Patreon immediately. It's worth every penny. Just do it. You want murder. You want mystery. You want justice. You want laughter. Welcome to TCL. This is a lonely person. Hmm. The person who wrote this review is lonely, looking for friends, and has found two of them who won't judge her. Yeah. And don't tell her that she's boring. And to stop eating that bagel. It's a laugh riot. Let's laugh along at all the victims. Here's one. 10 out of 10. The only downside of this podcast is that Jillian and Patrick are not my real life best friends. And the convo isn't happening in my living room. Fucking pathetic, man. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking pathetic. If only my cats could talk. <laughs> right. I, <laughs> I don't think she had enough words to use. She ran out of space in order to type that part. All right. I've derailed us long enough, Annie. Let's get back to bashing these well, assholes. Yeah. I mean, a lot of these things, they're just... It's all out of left field. Clip one. Okay. They start talking about people that sort of like seem like they're villains. Like Blagojevich comes off as an 80s villain. But then they start naming people that aren't villains. And then they name check a guy that they could not possibly have meant to say this. Let's hear clip one. He just looks like the bully date rapist from every yeah. John Hughes movie from the 80s. He looks like a total cross between 80s Charlie Sheen and 80s Judd Hirsch. Yeah, I heard Judd that too. Uh, yeah. All right. What are you talking I don't about? know if people know. I, he must have met Judd Nelson, right? Obviously, yeah. Judd Hirsch. <laughs> if people don't know, if you watch Taxi, yeah. Judd Hirsch looked like he was 70 when he was 30. Yeah. And in 1980. Not a fucking 80s <laughs> villain rapist in any way. I was like, Judd Hirsch? I don't know. I, it's, again, it's, it's okay to make a mistake, but they edit this podcast so fucking yeah, oh much. My. Like, why is it that an outtake? Why is it actually in that the show? It's just outtake. random. Clearly, the producer is in his 20s and doesn't know yeah, who Judd Hirsch is no either. no fucking clue what they're even talking about. One of the things they do that really annoys the shit out of me, and this is why I had to turn it off last night when we were listening to it, is because they play all these clips from the movie that they're reviewing, but they just repeat the same information. They don't add anything. And I have a couple examples of that. Ted's family were in the have-not group, but they could have not been more beaver cleaver if they tried his mom worked as a secretary mr bundy was a really good dad they were a good family yeah like according to her like he was poor but his family was like totally normal super involved parents they just said that right and <laughs> either you're telling the story or you're playing the clip of the other person telling the story why is it both yeah. here's another example where they're just repeating the same shit Ted Bundy was on the Seattle Crime Prevention Advisory Commission. I know. Specifically focusing on crimes against women with a focus on rape. A year or so before the women started disappearing, Ted had a brief job working for the Seattle Crime Commission. All right. <laughs> he 
just said that. I don't want to be a complete asshole on your show that you host, but yeah. you do that all the time, too. I do it because I'm setting up a fucking joke, you moron. These assholes are trying to tell us a story that I've already heard from the source material. So what you're saying is that there's... What you're about to hear on this next heard. one. Okay. <laughs> I was going to repeat what you just said, but go ahead. Yeah, I know. On this next thing, what you're about to hear, Andy, is more cackling and not jokes. You want to hear cackling and not jokes? This is what it sounds Carl's like. Carl's standing on the table right now. <laughs> So then, like, our friend Steven goes to the Florida State Prison, like, takes the elevator or whatever (laughs) up to death row and goes to, like, the conference room. (laughs) Oh, God. You know what's interesting about this is the biggest offense that they made, in my opinion, being hosts of this wildly popular true crime show. Mm Mm-hmm. As you mentioned, live shows, they're talking about conventions that you can go to and you can meet them. And they're, they're all over the place. Right. Right. Big, big money, big hand over fist. Big celebrities. But for some reason, they watch the Ted Bundy documentary and they say this. Oh, my goodness, girl. I knew nothing about Ted Bundy. Look, nothing. I didn't either. I knew the basics. I knew that there was this like allegedly handsome, allegedly charming guy. That's who... the extent of what I knew. You knew nothing about Ted Bundy? Jesus Christ. The most talked about serial killer of the last 40 years? You knew nothing about Ted Bundy. I I didn't even know about this guy. Then why are you on a true crime podcast? Uh, Yeah, really. What are you doing? It's it's only maybe like the Mount Rushmore of true crime is face I I didn't know anything about it. Yeah. Ted Ted who? How do you pronounce that? How do you spell that? Bundy? What? So you mentioned the live shows. I did. And... Another thing that you bring up all the time that you can't stand is when they make it about themselves and they had because they're talking about Blagojevich. Uh, he was from Chicago. They have to talk about the time that they went to Chicago. Oh, God. But five. <laughs> I hate that shit. Chicago treated us very well. Uh, wow. That's a little bit of revisionist history. Except because... the time, except when I got food poisoning after our show. Because we did the show and then we were starving and it was like 11 o'clock and we couldn't find a single goddamn place in Chicago that was still serving food. Do you remember that? Yeah, and you went home yes. and I went out to eat yes. with like uh, Susan Simpson, like Britta and Dawn and all these, and Mike and all these people like Susan Simpson's pals. And I, then I got food poisoning. I woke up in the middle of the night sick as you don't even want to know. Who fucking cares? <laughs> You know what? I don't want to know. I don't. Sue. I didn't even ask. Oh, you know, Sue and Mike and Britta. No, I don't know these people, and I don't give a fuck. By the way. Great story. Patrick Michael does the same thing. It's how you know that you're talking to a boring person. When you just mention a place, and they tell you a random story. Oh, he's uh, he's in Chicago at this point in the story. Chicago, I had a dream that I was on the White Sox. Like, uh, whatever. <laughs> what does that have to do with anything? We're talking about... Jesus fucking Christ. God, I got to fill an hour. I might as well tell this story about a dream I had. They're talking about documentaries that are hours long. They can easily fill an hour without talking about nonsense. And by the way, there's no way she's this dumb. If They're talking about the reason why... I don't know why I'm explaining this to true crime aficionados. The reason why Ted Bundy was able to get away with all this shit is because a charming guy. Good-looking, charming guy was able to convince young women to get into his car with him. Hmm. And the one guy is describing what he remembers about Ted Bunny. He says this. And this is where Marlon goes. He was the kind of guy you'd want your sister to marry. Sweetheart. <laughs> I... <laughs> you still say that now? Like, he doesn't even say it with any air of, like, well, I thought that. But I good... know. Thanks. That's the point. That was the fucking, are you that? You... Oh, goodness, it didn't happen. It's just he thinks about it like, my good friend Ted. Right. Can what you track I... him down? What Whatever happened to that guy? What happened to that guy? I guess it was around 1980. I have a question for Jillian. Are you dumb, stupid, or dumb, huh? I mean, come on. You obviously know. I can't believe this guy still wants his sister to marry this guy. He's raped dozens of women. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking moron. Oh, thankfully, the reason why he was finally brought to justice is because women got involved. Let the women do the work. Let us do the work. And somewhere Detective Kathleen's like, thank you. (laughs) Thank you. Guys are just fucking idiots. They can't get anything right. Finally, a woman steps in and goes, I'm not going to let this guy murder seven more people. I'll get involved and fix this all. Holy shit. These people are insufferable. Yeah. They're Mm. difficult. 
you want me to jump in with something here? If you want. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> if you want, I'm kind of getting annoyed. <laughs> it does, it, it, this beats you into submission with how annoying it is. It is. I don't it's, know. It's really it don't. tires you out. Right. That's I'm, why like, we had that lull. It's just because like, I'm more I, tired I, than usual. I really don't. Yeah. I really don't want to keep talking about this. I'm, I'm, we, don't, I'm, we don't have to. <laughs> I'm literally looking at my list like, I think I'm just going to skip this clip and yeah. this clip. That's fine. But Jillian is... We have a lot to talk about, Andy. Stuttering John is on a fucking rampage, so... You know what? <laughs> Whatever. I, I really think we should just <laughs> jump ship on these clips, honestly. Yeah. I don't... Really... I think I think we summed it up pretty well, right? Yeah. It's an I, annoying I show that's to, way too popular see, one, two, with three, untalented four. people. I have four clips that I'm just like, I don't even want to hear this anymore. Yeah. It's hard to listen to. All right. Who are these podcasts? W-A-T-P.